Hey guys, Brian from Filmatic AI, and today I'm going to do a full overview of Color Clone Studio. So Color Clone Studio is meant to be a custom camera matching tool for any camera. So it's different from our Color Clone plugin because our plugin has a fixed amount of cameras that we've added. But if we don't have a certain camera in our library, you can actually make the matches on your own using the exact same machine learning algorithm that we use in-house. So this is going to be more of a general overview video on how it works and what to expect from it. I'm going to go through the whole process of matching two different cameras, and then at the end of it, I'll show you what you get from it. It's worth noting that this is a pre-release beta build that I'll be demoing. So depending on when you see this video, some of the UI elements will change. So here we are in the home screen. As you can see, I have different camera tests that I've added, and that's going to be our main input. And in another video, we're going to show you how to shoot successful camera tests and how to do them right. We have our LUTs that we've generated in the past, so we save a whole history on your account. Also on the left side, we have our sidebar that shows you the same thing. But I'm going to go through this process from beginning to end as if I haven't created any of these. So. I'm going to go ahead and create a camera test, which these camera tests are over under exposure tests. Typically we shoot minus five to plus five stops of a gray card and also color charts. So the main input will be just single stills of them as EXR files, PNG, TIFF, or JPEG files. We're working on DPX support in the coming future. Let's pick a camera. Let's do Blackmagic. Um, we have that in our library, Blackmagic. We'll do Pocket 4K. And then I'm just going to notate it with a 5600 Kelvin because that's the lighting spectrum that we shot this particular test under. So I'm going to go through my library of camera tests. We'll pick the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. This was under 5600 Kelvin. These are single still EXR files, but again, you can pick JPEG, PNG, or TIFF files. Everything successfully loaded. And then we're just going to click next to upload the camera test. It's worth noting that you don't need a high resolution for this section because it'll just be downscaled anyway. So please don't upload 8K or 11K JPEG files or still photos. So after uploading your stills, you're greeted with the main UI of our application. As you can see in this particular color chart, I have minus five stops to plus five stops. So it automatically sorts your stills in terms of luminosity. So you don't have to do that manually. And typically it'll just select middle gray, which I believe is this one. The main way that this works is all you have to do is you just select which color chart you want to use and then put the, the markers at the corners. So in this particular case, I shot three color charts, as you can see. We're just going to use this one in the middle and maybe we'll use some samples on the left side. So one of the main features is its flexibility in that you can use any color chart you want. You can choose to make your own, which we did in the middle here, or you can use an off the counter one like the left side one. I'll say the left side one, I think it costs maybe $120, $150. But this middle one, we actually just printed it out at a local print shop for $10. So it really doesn't matter what color chart you use, just as long as it's the same color chart for both cameras. Let's sample this middle chart that we made, and we will provide this middle chart for any other user who purchases the plugin. We select the four corners of the chart, and I know just because we made it. This is a 16 by 16 grid. And we'll click Save Chart. So once we zoom in, we can see that the corners are aligned to the corners of the chart. And then we'll save that. And then actually, how about we sample some of these colors on the left side? Let's sample this middle gray, just because um, you know the more data, the better matches you'll get. So this is a four by one pattern. I'm gonna add a grid. So I'm just going to select that, select that like this, and then I'm going to save. So now when we actually create the match, we're going to sample the middle chart, and then we're going to sample four of these colors of our middle gray ramp. Say we actually want to favor more skin tones. Okay, let's actually do another one for skin tones up here. So this is a seven by two grid pattern up here. So I'll just make another grid, seven by two. So we're going to click save. So it saves the grid coordinates to all of the photos. So you only have to do this once per camera test and we've saved successfully. So how about we create another test? So I'm going to go ahead and upload, I don't know, maybe um, Sony Venice 2. Let's do a Venice 2 and 5600 Kelvin because that's what we shot our camera test under. I know we have that in the library, 5600 Kelvin. So I'm going to go ahead and upload successful. We'll click next. We'll wait for this camera test to upload. Okay, 
So the Sony Venice 2 loaded, it just took a couple seconds, and we're going to repeat the same grid pattern as the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, which you know, again, we can reference back here, and then we're going to go back to the Sony Venice 2. And the most important thing is make sure that you sample the same amount of samples as the other camera. So again, we're going to do 16 by 16 here. We're going to save that grid and we'll zoom in and uh, arrange this grid a little bit more precisely. Great. So we'll save that. And then I believe we also did a 4x1 here for this grayscale ramp. 4x1. We'll create that grid. Um, you can actually see there's a little reflection here. So we're going to avoid that part just so we get a little bit of a better sample on this one. So we're just going to make a line like this. And again, you don't have to do this exact pattern. Um, it's really flexible to what you want to do and what you are going to be shooting. So your use case. And then we'll also do 7x2. 7x2. Right there and right there. So we're going to save that grid. So we're going to save overall, which shouldn't take too long. Save successfully. Perfect. So now what we do is we can go to the home screen. And then you can see these two cameras, the Sony Venice 2, 5600 Kelvin, and the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, 5600 Kelvin, which is just the particular lighting spectrum that I shot the test under. We have 11 images for both, which is good. We want them to match. And also the amount of samples. We have 274 samples per exposure. If you calculate this out, we'll actually, this actually scales up to over 3,000 samples that we're going to be matching and running through our algorithm. Once you've created those camera tests, we're just going to create a match. So our match name, let's just call it Blackmagic Four Pocket 4K to Venice 2. So our source camera now, we started with the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, so that's going to be our source camera. And then now we want to target it to match the Sony Venice 2, which is our output camera. So source camera is what you are starting with and output camera is what you want it to match. So we want to match again the Pocket 4K to a Sony Venice 2. And then now we pick the LUT resolution, 17 cubed, 33 cubed, or 65. Typically 33 cubed is sufficient for 90% of the cases, but if you need a little bit more resolution, we have a 65 cubed LUT here as well. So. We just click that and then create a match and the process is done. So we're training our model and it's taking those over 3000 points of data and running it through our algorithm. So here we are 96% and it should be done in just a second. So now that it's done, we just click download LUT file and select the directory that we want to save it to. So I'll click download LUT file and then I'll just save it. So now that we've made our first LUT, which you can go to our home UI, the LUT tab and it shows a record of when we created it. Why don't I actually go and show you now how we can go back and reiterate on this LUT so easily. The first version of this LUT might not work that perfectly and that's completely fine. I just want to stress that this is an iterative process. There's a lot of creativity in how you choose to make these camera tests and how you choose to select these colors. So maybe we want to sample a little more colors. So we'll go back in our Blackmagic Pocket 4K and I'll show you how we can actually sample more colors where we can just re-edit. So now that it's loaded, we can go back and say we just want to sample a few extra colors. So we'll add this. So all of these save already. And then now we can just make a 4x2 grid as we did before. And OK, we're going to go and sample these colors. Right there. And then we'll click Save Grid. We're going to save this and then I'll show you now that it's going to reflect in the home screen UI save successfully. So we added 14 extra colors, which here you can see now our sample size has increased with the black magic and the Venice 2. And it's incredibly important to make sure that the samples match the two cameras that you want to match. Just because if the samples are off, then there's going to be an error in how the matches are calculated. So we'll have to do the same thing to the Venice 2. So we'll go actions, we'll edit, and then now we'll sample these bottom colors. So we just make another seven by two. And then all we have to do after this is create another LUT, which as you can see is very simple. 
So again, our Venice 2 is now sampling 288 colors, and our Black Magic Pocket 4K is now sampling 288 colors as well. So those match, the number of images match, so then we can create a match between these two cameras and run it through our algorithm. So again, we'll just do that process again. Black Magic Pocket, Cinema 4K, Venice 2, 5600 Kelvin, Source Camera again, Black Magic to Venice 2. Or we could do it the other way around. For some reason, if you want to match the Venice 2 to the Black Magic, then again, since all our camera tests are saved, you can make any sort of combination of them, as long as the number of samples and the number of images match. So if you want to go the other way, you can go the reverse order, but we're just going to do it the first way. And then again, we'll just do a 33 cubed and we'll create this match. And that's how you can go back and iterate on the matches that you made. Okay, so now we're going to test the LUT that we just created on Color Clone Studio and bring it into DaVinci Resolve and test out the results. So I've already did some of the tedious work of setting up the project file and just doing a comparison. Right now, this is before of our black magic and the Pocket 4K. And this is um, the exact same camera test that I uploaded that I created the match on. I've already imported the LUT into DaVinci Resolve. We'll just apply that LUT now. We're going to create the node, then we're going to add the LUT, which I added into this LUT file for Filmatic AI, Color Clone Studio, and this is what we did. This is with the 288 samples, so it was actually the second version we did, and then we're going to apply it. And instantly, we see how much closer this look is now. It's worth noting that this isn't just a 1D transformation, but it's a fully three-dimensional transformation. You can just see how non-linear these transforms are and how some of these colors spread out just as the Venice would. So this is one of the cool things that it's that powerful that you can create these log to log transforms to then treat it exactly as if it were now converted to a Sony Venice 2. So then what we do is we would add Sony S-Log3 Cine to Rec. 709 on top of this. So here is our black magic. This is our first node. So this is our color clone studio. And then now we'll simply add the standard Sony Rec. 709 on top of it and we'll use the type A just because I like that one better. This is with just our transform and this is with the Sony LUT. This is without our transform and then the Sony LUT on top of that. But you know we have to add the Sony 709 to the Venice as well. So we'll just copy and paste that one node and there it is. So now both of them have the Sony 709 LUT. This isn't just changing the white balance and making it a little cooler as if this were. But if you look at some of these tones on the right side, you can really narrow in on how much the hues of these colors change much more accurately to the Venice. So when I shot this test, the exposure was compensated so that the exposure is the exact same for both cameras. And that's something that you need to make sure that you do when you're working with these camera tests is exposing them the same to get the best results. In a nutshell, that's how Color Clone Studio works, and there's so much more potential that I think people will be able to use in the future. So this isn't, again, just for videos, but it's also for photography as well. So you can shoot still frames of your favorite film stocks on still photos, such as Portra 400, for example. You can make a profile based off that. And then you can even make a transform using Lightroom or Photoshop once you create this LUT. So you can use Color Clone Studio to create your matching LUT, and then with that .cube file, you can now apply that LUT to any software that takes a .cube LUT file. So either in pre-production, post-production, whatever your workflow is, the flexibility is built in. So in closing, this was just a quick overview of how Color Clone Studio works and some of its use cases. There's so much more to go in depth. It's such a powerful tool. And honestly, it's really up to you, the creator, in how you choose to use this tool. So please feel free to like and subscribe. Feel free to reach out at any time as well. We're happy to answer any questions. And if you have any suggestions on future videos of what we can cover in terms of the use of our application. Thanks.